There was a definite rush as you release the javelin. I enjoy it more than anything else. Every time I throw, it, there's always almost a different feeling with it. Like it's not the same over and over again. I've loved sport and I could never really participate at a proper level because of my disability. Max's cerebral palsy really was a result of him being so premature. Max was born at 29 weeks gestation, so almost three months early. I think it took me a while to realise I was different than other people because I used to just walk around and I used frames and stuff occasionally. But I always used to think, oh, yeah, I'm just like everyone else. But, you know... I can only do what I can do. I'm not going to apologise for that, so... We had long talks about what he wanted to do in life. And he said, you know, my real passion is sport. I do remember the first time I threw a javelin. All I can remember is I threw it, like, I don't know, maybe, like, eight metres or something. It was a rubbish throw and... It was fucking painful. I woke up the next day and my shoulders were on fire and I I'm, I'm pretty much hated every moment of it. It was brilliant. <laughs> when Mac started to realise that the javelin was something he was really good at. I remember him turning around to me and saying, I can't believe I've actually found something I'm good at. Once we got down to Portsmouth to meet Bronwyn and she said, if you train hard enough, I can get you to that stage where you'll be in with a good chance of making the Paralympics. I want to try and get to the Paralympics. Like, for a lot of people, obviously that's the goal. And I'm going to have to work 10 times harder than I'm currently working right now. In order for Max to start competing at a competitive level, he first had to become a member of English Athletics. So with English Athletics, it made me go through an assessment process. The EA assessments are basically a way to categorise disabled athletes to help them perform at their best level within whatever sport they're in. Max actually sort of sat on the fence between an F-35 and an F-34. Well, in the F-35 category, we'd be able to compete standing, whereas in the F-34 category, considered more affected in the leg, so competes heated. So in the end, they've actually decided to make him an F-35 category with the possibility of going down to an F-34. started with him, he was trying to about eight metres or something, um, which is, yeah, let, let, it, let it go, let it go. Yeah, so his progression's been quite good, but it's very frustrating because we're really not quite sure whether he's going to be a seated thrower or whether he's going to progress being an ambulance. So yes, I can see him going a long way.
at first I had reservations about switching to seat of throwing, mainly because I started the sport and the training and the sessions to become healthier and physically better. And I was worried that if I go into the seat of throwing, I start neglecting my legs. Yeah, Max can be quite stubborn sometimes, and he, he wants to be seen as being normal and not being disabled. Initially, he just said, no, I'm not interested, you know, don't want to do that, you know, I want to be standing. I don't feel like I'm a proper sportsman of, you know, I'm going to do it seating. Being seated, I don't have to worry about getting cramp or balance because I'm not focusing on the legs, I'm just focusing on the lean and the throw. Now Max has realised what possibilities seated throwing could open up. I actually do think that if EA decide to keep him in the F35 category, that's actually going to be quite hard for him now. He would definitely achieve better results if he was a seated thrower as an F-34. This belonged to my grandpa when he was, uh, you know, he did a lot of sports. He was involved quite a lot with doing a set of different things, but he did powerlifting primarily. Max always had a very close relationship with his grandpa, and growing up, grandpa would often talk about the different world championships and records that he held. As the boys grew up, they, you know, just loved hearing everything he'd achieved and his medals and the fact that he's in the Guinness Book of Records and everything, so he was a real hero to them. Max's grandpa always said, when you're old enough, um, I'll get you down the gym and I'll train you. Growing up, he was just my grandpa. I didn't have the outlook and the realisation that he was an amazing athlete. But, you know, when I got older and realised how good he was, he was an inspiration to me then. Oh, I, I think he would have been incredibly proud of Max. I think he, he really would be. And, uh, yeah, they, they would have made a good team training, definitely. The sad thing is, I think I only really understood how good he was and how much he, he would have been a good coach to me, for example, after he died. I think Max, as he's maturing, he's finding out that it, it is actually far better to accept your, yourself as you, as you are. Yeah, I mean, in many ways, me and my mum don't get along. But sport is the one thing that I think almost unifies us. There's an underlining fact that she, I think, is secretly proud of what I do. He's really been determined and he's put a lot of effort into training you know, with any luck, it will pay off. I never went out and did sport to prove anyone wrong. I did it for myself. <laughs>